Hello ladies, it's Mickey B and it is episode number three of Energize and Moisturize where we energize our hair and our soul and we moisturize our hair all while having positive, productive conversation. I'm a little bit tired today. I had a very eventful weekend starting Thursday, Friday and lasting today which is Saturday. So today I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to just do a simple moisturizing today with my Tresemme uh, Curl Hydration Conditioner. I have tons of Tresemme Conditioner from Couponing, so I like to use it from time to time to use it up. I've got today's quote right here, uh, just so that I can be consistent and show you my little ceramic uh, box. I'm going to pull out today's quote and I'm going to read that and then we're going to get started. So let me do that. Okay, here we go. Today's quote says, Dear God, I want to follow you, but sometimes I find myself distracted by the things this world offers. Please help me to renew my focus on you. That's a good one. I like that one. Um, yeah, that's a good one. I, I know a lot of people fall victim to that, including myself. I try very hard to make sure that the things that I am involved in or focusing on or are doing are in some form or fashion productive, positive, of course, I'm no saint, but I do try to bring myself always around to doing something that is good, that is helpful, and that will benefit others. That's just what I like to do, what I like to try to do on a regular. So that uh, statement is very timely because... Janaea and I, I know I'm always talking about Janaea and I, but I don't want to talk about anybody else that I don't know, but it, it always, all these quotes always apply to something that we've uh, gone through in our lives, Janaea and I, and probably people that you know or, you know, or somebody else that they know or you've heard stories about. We're all human, we all go through the same things, so um, it's always easy to find someone to relate it to. Before, I know you guys hate when I segue, but I just wanted to talk about my hair. I've been wearing my little scarf look, so that's why I've got this little uh, lopsided Eiffel Tower bun in my head. Um, I've had it for a few days, so I have not done anything to my hair. It's very, very in need of moisturizing, and I haven't detangled or combed, so that's why I'm just going to go ahead and do this quick Tresme conditioner situation sprinkle some water on it put some tresemme and then detangle tresemme is very it makes my hair so manageable so easy to detangle which is why in situations where i'm here at this point and i haven't detangled and i don't want to take a comb and pull my hair out i use this uh, conditioner and you'll see watch when i put it on how easily my hair starts to detangle so now let's get back to the quote um, so it's saying, God, I want to follow you, but sometimes I find myself distracted by the things that this world offers. I think that that quote speaks volumes because a lot of people don't realize how true that is in their situation and how much it uh, affects them. Now, the reason I say it's very timely is because Janae and I went out to lunch. She took me out to lunch the other day and she was, she's always wanting some new gadget or item or something and she's always saving her money to do one thing but before she can get to that one thing she's already planning to spend her money on something else. So, and I get it, I know how it is when you're young and you want to have all the latest this and the latest that but she never follows through with the initial plan 
that I'm always trying to help her with because when it comes to financing and saving for something, I'm really good at that. I've always been really good at that. And I told her, I said, just let me help you get there. I promise you, you'll get there if you let me help you. But you never follow through with your original, original um, goal that you set for yourself. And I said, and because of that, you're never going to see that you can actually do it and reach that goal. Because something new will come out or, and she'll want to get that. And she hasn't even... Uh, finish the first goal that she tried to obtain with saving for this and saving for that and then she changes it midstream so we were just having this talk the other day because we had just established a goal and uh, you know what she was going to do she's trying to save up to buy her first car so she's working really hard this summer she's working seven days a week she was going to school and working. So when she's not in school, she's working. I don't really see her that much. She's never had a full day off. And I says, okay, well, I see you working hard. Let me help. let me show you how to do this so that you can reach your goal. And then she at lunch was saying, well, I decided I'm going to buy this, what was it, a Mac computer for $800, regularly $1,200 or something like that, something crazy. And I'm like, well, what about the car? Well, I don't know about the car. I'm like, well, you haven't even, I said, why don't you just, let's get to the end of the first goal, save your money, and at the end of the summer, see where you're at, and then decide what you're going to do. But there's a promotion going right now. And I said, so there's always going to be a promotion. That's how they get you. In other words, she's distracted by all of the stuff that's out there for this generation to go and purchase. They really are into this electronic stuff. And it's not something that's mandatory that she has to have. But because it's new, another distraction, she wants to get it. Now, mind you, she has a laptop that works. She has everything that she needs and could possibly want. But if it's something new, it's like a distraction and she gets caught up in it. And then the goal that you have set for yourself suddenly just becomes, she eliminates it very quickly because there's something new to distract her. And so then I started telling her, I said, look, Everything that comes out is not for you. What God has for you, you'll get it. And you'll get it when he wants you to get it in your time. Um, so, but if you never allow yourself to achieve the goal, then you'll never see that. And you'll never know that. It's kind of like what I was saying last week, how um, her value system right now is probably where it should be you know for her age and her situation which is why she needs me in her life to keep her on track to let her know that look i get what you are experiencing i went through the same thing you know you want to be able to get what you want when you want it but you're not in the position to do that right now and you're letting all these distractions come in and make you waver and you're never going to get there if you keep changing in midstream just do what you're supposed to do and let God do the rest. If you put your focus back on God and what you, you know, doing the right thing and moving forward doing the right thing, all that stuff will fall into play. But these distractions, I mean, it's effective for these guys because I see so many youngsters um, with all this stuff that they don't necessarily need. But when you look at their foundation, you know, what saving for the future and planning for this and that. And you have to look at what's going on in the world. At some point, you're going to want to buy a house. And the other thing is, these distractions to me, I was telling her that, you know, you don't, because she wanted to finance this. I'm like, okay, you start talking financing and contracts and credit. Okay, I definitely have to say something to you now. Don't do it. <laughs> They target you when you're in college because you're young, gullible, you're a starving student and they know you want the nice things and they know you can't afford them and this is how they get that stronghold on you 
early. Don't do it to yourself. If you have a good credit score, maintain it. This is what I was telling her. She has a good credit score. She got her first credit card. And I'm like, don't start charging. You use it when it is absolutely necessary. And it's something that you truly need. And when you do use the credit card, if you can pay it off right away or in the next few payments, but don't just go hanging out with your friends and shopping and buying stuff just because everybody else is doing it. There's gonna, there are times in your life where you have to deny yourself something that is not truly necessary. If it's just because everybody else is doing it or it's the latest thing, you don't have to absolutely positively lutely <laughs> if that's a word have it but you just want it but you already have something that serves the purpose that's not the time you go buy stuff you don't your situation is not there you got one more year left in school let's focus on getting that degree locking that in and working towards a career get through all of this process you if you're doing it right you have to sacrifice. You have to sacrifice some things to get where you truly want to be. Because in that process is where you're going to learn and you're going to grow and you're going to see the stuff that you have been wanting to get so badly. It's just a distraction. And I'll tell you, you know if something is a distraction when, when it's new, it's exciting. But it gets old really easily, especially when the next new thing comes out. You're distracted and you're getting caught up in distractions when the one that you have that you want to replace that you just bought a year ago and now you're saying you want to get another one. That's not something you need. That's just something you want, but it's not necessarily what you need. You're just distracted and you're caught up in all this stuff that's coming out. And, you know, again, if God has something for you, then it will come to you and it will be easy. You won't have to sit here and try to figure out how I'm going to do this. Okay, if I do that and then I do this, it's not going to be that hard. When it's meant to be, it will be. Don't look at what he has blessed somebody else with and want that for you. It might not be for you right now, which is why you don't have it. So this is what I was going, and I'm constantly telling her this because I always tell her, you're so easily distracted. I'm like, you are doing damage to yourself because you're not allowing yourself to see what you're capable of achieving because you don't follow through. Follow through is so important when the distractions set in. I told her, I said, when you, the reason that she got distracted this time is because she, she took me out, it was for my birthday. So she went to buy me a birthday gift at Best Buy. And while she was shopping for me, she was also shopping for her. <laughs> so that's where this temptation came in. And, so, you know, she bought my gift, but she was she was gone a long time. So now I know why, because now she over here trying to figure out how to fit this laptop into the plan that wasn't even a part of the plan until she went to buy my birthday gift. So, again, don't get caught up in these distractions because they will set you back. You have to look at your situation and your goals. I was explaining to her, these things are designed to get your attention, to keep you in debt, and to keep you hooked. So they keep making money off of you, and you keep letting them. And then, you know, they throw this, oh, there's a promotion going on. And, and you know, it's, it only lasts for another two weeks or just for the rest of the month. Don't get caught up in that. Because that's a bunch of malarkey, as a vice president says, Biden. Um, don't, that stuff doesn't bother me. My thing is, because she was like, well, I have to get it now because the promotion, with the promotion, you can get a uh, hundred or two hundred dollars off. I don't know what the details was, but the promotion, uh, you could get some money off of the price. And I said, the promotion, I said, don't even get caught up in that because it's all, again, designed to distract you. And when you get caught up in material things, you don't, you lose your focus on the things that are truly valuable and important. Because she was frustrated. She was like, you and I, we just don't think alike. You're always trying to talk me out of things. And I'm like, I'm not trying to talk you out of things. I'm trying to get you to see 
that you're going to put yourself in a position where this stuff is going to come back to bite you, especially if you're talking financing something. You're still in school. Your jobs come. You've been, she's been working steadily, but they stop and they start. I said, there's never a guarantee that you're going to get another job. You don't know until you get it. So don't lock yourself into a financial situation that you can't even confirm that you're going to have the money 12 months from now. And now you have pressure and I'm like, you got to focus on school because you got one more year left and you don't need all these things that are, could potentially become a problem for you. So just leave it alone until the situation is right. When it's time and it's right and it's easy and you have the money, then that's when you do it. But right now, you're distracted. So you're like, I'm not distracted. Why do you keep saying that? Because you are and you can't see it. So I keep pointing it out to her. So when I came across this quote, I was like, this was perfect. And I was actually trying to get her to do a session with me, but she's working. So she's been working every day. And that's the one thing that I can commend her on. She's going to work uh, from nine to five, six to 10, four to 10, whatever hours they have been giving her. She's been taking them because she's trying to give, you know, save money. But as quickly as she's making it, she's spending it. And that's where the problem comes. It's like you're doing yourself a disservice right now. And she was ready to blow off the whole car situation. I'm probably not going to be able to get the car anyways. I'm like, whether that's true or not, you haven't even gotten to the end of the journey, which is only another four weeks or so, to even find out how close you could have gotten to the you know, getting the car. And that's when I told her, I said, you have to get your head right and focus on what is important. I said, first of all, what is valuable is not stuff. I said, what's valuable is what we're doing right now. We're sitting down, spending time together, having a nice lunch, enjoying each other. That's the stuff that has the value. I said, and that's free. You know, minus the cost of the lunch. But, you know, even if we do it at home, go for a walk, that's the stuff that has value. That's what you should be focusing on. I remember what it was like when I was in college, wanting all the new stuff. And as I said before in my last video, and I couldn't get it. I had to sacrifice, and I told her. You know, the other thing, you will have to pay back some student loans when you get out of school. So you don't need to be trying to add any more bills and drama to that. If you have everything that you need, not everything that you want, but everything that you need, then you're doing good. I'm not charging for rent. I'm letting her use my car. She pays for gas and there was a repair that had to happen. I split it with her because you need to learn some responsibility. And in all of that, she sees how that feels. She doesn't like it, but she's still not grasping that I need to be saving. Now, for me, saving was really easy. I was a saver right off the bat. I don't know how or where that came from, but from when I was young until now, I could follow a penny from birth till it was deceased. And I knew I could track down the whereabouts of that. My, do my penny, from a dollar to a penny to whatever, if it was mine, I could, uh, Stay on top of it. I just have always been like that. So I've always been good with handling finances and I've always been really good with sacrificing when it was necessary and living on a budget. So I'm trying to instill those skills in her, but she's uh, so distracted by all this new stuff, all this new technology. And that bugs me a little with this generation because she'll want to do something and like watch a movie and we're supposed to be watching a movie together and she pulls out the phone and she says I'm not on it all the time she says you're on it more than I am I'm like I'm not on it more than you but I'll tell you what when I am on it it's just me and the computer it's not me and you sitting down trying to talk or watch a movie if we're watching a movie I'm watching a movie if we're talking we're talking so we're a little different in that regard I do it when I'm by myself and I'm just winding down or relaxing or doing some research or something but when I'm around people I'm around people I'm not distracted by who might become nothing is that important 
because we had a friend come over today and we were sitting down having a nice visit and chatting my phone my business phone kept ringing and she kept saying your phone ring my phone my business phone rang 10 times uh while she was my friend was here today visiting and Janae, every time the phone rang Janae looked at me like aren't you gonna go get it and i just kept talking and visiting with my friend i'm not thinking about that phone right now there is uh answering uh, you know a voice message on there if they want to leave a message they can do that and i'll get back with them but i'm here i'm over here right now i'm not going to keep running to my phone every time it rings it's saturday saturdays are optional if i'm not doing anything and i'm home then i'll go ahead and take the call but if i'm doing something then i'm not taking the call but she it bothered her Every time that a phone rang, and I just I saw her looking at me like, "Aren't you gonna get it?" And I just continued on with my visit because that was not my priority right now. My friend drove a long way to come and see us. I'm not gonna pull out a phone and start talking um, over that. I just I don't do that. That's where we're different. So when we're watching a movie or something, and she's sitting there, and I just leave or whatever, she's like, "No, don't go. I want to spend time with you." Really. You're going to spend time with me, but you've been looking at that phone the whole time. Looks like you want to spend time with your phone, so I'm going to let you. I just have a low tolerance for that. But the distractions, they're, they're really caught up. Um, I see it a lot in this younger generation. Not even some of the older ones or middle-aged ones. You know, be mindful. That stuff is good to a, de to a degree, but don't let it consume you. You know, these distractions are not always designed with your best interest in mind. So you have to be aware of that. Don't let them pull you away from something or make you miss something that you can't get back over something that wasn't really important. Don't find that out the hard way. So the other part of the quote is keeping your focus on God. Let me get my focus back on you. I'm telling you, if you want to simplify your life and make your life easy, just ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Because a lot of times people think, oh, because you're not hanging out and doing what everybody else is doing, or if your interests are more simple and you know that don't you don't have to go broke spending a lot of money and all that that that's no fun you're boring oh she don't like doing nothing you simplify your life you will find great joy in many of the simple things joy you can't get from just buying something and that's something that i've migrated to more so is just enjoying people just enjoying my house my home enjoying making these videos things that i can do at my leisure and my convenient but that also bring me joy um getting focused back putting your focus back on god and you know what god would have you do in your life simplifies your life and makes it easy for you to enjoy a life if you think of the ten commandments you put your focus back on god just on a basic level and you think of the ten commandments all of those ten commandments are designed for you and they're designed for you to be happy he already knows how to be happy he's given the secrets to us so that we could know when people get depressed and sad and I don't have this or they look at what other people have and they start feeling sorry for themselves if that happens to you put your focus back on God when, whenever I would be feeling any kind of sadness or any kind of dark days or depressed or Oh, everybody's doing this and I'm not doing it. I'm feeling lonely or sad. What I do is I get the Bible and and it works every time. I will go get the Bible and I would just open it up to any page on the Bible, in the Bible. I just take it and with no rhyme or reason, I would just find a spot to open it up. And whatever I opened it up to, I would read out loud. And when I read it out loud, the words were so soothing, it was like God talking to me. And it didn't matter what I was going through or what I was experiencing, the words always made me feel better. So try that the next time you feel sad or 
you know, like uh, your situation isn't where you want it to be or you just having a pity party, feeling sorry for yourself and you've forgotten how fortunate you really are, just open up the Bible. And just whatever you open it up to read it, you don't have to look even for a specific scripture. I would just open it up anywhere and I would read it out loud. And it was like my voice became God's voice talking to me. And it was very soothing and very comforting. And before I knew it, I felt good. So put your focus back on God or whoever or whatever it is that you believe in that's positive. Just focus on that. Focus on other people. Call somebody that you know who might need some help with something and say, look, you need any help? I know you just got out of the hospital or you've been working hard or I know you have all those kids you need a break. Put your focus on somebody else because when you serve others, you're serving God. That's what he wants us to do is to help others. And I'll tell you, I've had some of the best times volunteering and meeting people and helping others with their situations. I get more out of that helping others than just trying to focus on myself. So put your focus back on God and when you do that the distractions that are keeping you from being happy in the first place will soon start to fade and you'll look at them completely different because in serving and helping other people you will find how for, you will be able to see and find out how fortunate you really are when you take your focus off of yourself and stop doing this pity party thing like your life is so hard and just because you don't have this or have that I always think of the people who don't have what I have because everybody there's always somebody who's going where it looks like they have more than you and they're in a better situation than you are. But that's just what you see. It's not what you know. Until you know this stuff for sure, don't ever think that your situation is worse off than somebody else's because what is on the surface is not always the truth. And I have lived that and I know that to be true. So don't ever think that just because what you see looks one way, it doesn't mean jack until you know the real deal and uh when Janea I was telling her about you know all these things I said you don't even have to have it you just want it I said don't get caught up in what everybody else is doing she's like well I see all my friends getting this and they're getting that and I'm always wondering when am I going to be able to get it when God has it for you when God has it for you it's going to be so easy you're going to be almost scared to dig it because you're <laughs> it's going to be that easy. I tell people when God gives you something, it's as easy as like he'll have something in his hand. This is just an analogy. But I always, this is what I do. I said, take this from my hand. And they try to take it and I ball my hand. They try to open it. I won't let them open. And then I say, now take it from my hand. And they go to take it and it's just that easy. And I tell people, when God gives you something, and it's something from God meant for you to happen, it will be that easy. And for some of you, that might sound far-fetched or hard to believe, but if you do the right thing and you do what God wants you to do and you take care of business, you live right, you help others when you can, you just live a good life. When it comes time for you to get something that you truly want and truly deserve and it's truly from God, it will be that easy. Because when it finally started happening for me, I'm like, wow, I can't believe that that was that easy. It just, it's almost scary. You're like, well, what's wrong? You know, I didn't have to fight and struggle and argue. And it just, if I wanted it, I could take it. We're so used to fighting to get things because we're trying to get things too soon, too fast, or things that aren't for us. When you have to fight and go through all that drama and go through all these twists and turns, that is, I call it divine intervention, but that's the universe, divine intervention, God, whoever you believe in or focus on, that's, that's, they're trying to tell you this is not where you're supposed to be. When you are where you're supposed to be, it's going to be easy. Don't get distracted what you, with what you want or what you think you want. Um, 
just when it's easy. That's how I learned how to tell where I was supposed to be, what job I was supposed to take, what I was supposed to do. I learned to listen to God. I took myself out of it and I looked at how things happened, how they were happening, you know. This was something that someone just came to me. Everything just fell in line. I couldn't have planned it any better. And when it happens like that, it's like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. And that means that that's where I'm going to be happy being. Because sometimes God knows, well, not sometimes. I believe all the time. <laughs> he knows us better than we know ourselves. But we have to take ourselves out of the equation sometimes and let him do his work. But don't, you know, take yourself out and be a passenger sometimes. Stop trying to drive everywhere and just go for the ride, follow the rules, and he'll give you a happy life. And he'll give you all the things that you want. And you will find that all the stuff that you thought you wanted in this distracted mindset are not even relevant anymore. And that's what I was saying that ties in to what I was talking about last week when your value system changes. When you take the focus off of what is not important, which is in most cases all that material stuff that they're trying to sell you and have you go in debt for, and you focus it on what is important, which is God's work, helping, serving others, just you know, doing the right thing and bettering yourself, uh, your life, you will see it'll be a whole different ball game. It'll be a whole different experience for you. You won't look at stuff and want it. You'll look at stuff and see, well, you know, anybody can do that if they want to pay for it. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that, you know, hard to achieve or to do. But it's all in how you look at things. So that's why I think today's quote was really good because I was just having this conversation with Janae and she needed it because she was feeling sad and like she's never gonna get what she wants and I'm like do you really feel like that because I'm looking at somebody who has an amazing life especially compared I said chick when I was your age I said you got way more stuff than I ever had all up until when I was working through college and all that, I said from a kid on, you've had a great life. You don't even know how well you've had it, which is why I think it's good to make kids get out and work for things so they can realize stuff is not free. You have to work for what you want to get. If you just give them things, that's when they get bored and di distracted. Bored and that saying, an uh, idle mind is the devil's workshop. That's how these kids become up to no good because you take out all the their motivation and their discipline and their desire to go out and earn those things by just giving it to them. I never just gave her anything. That's why we did a video a long time ago where she was complaining about me getting her texting on her cell phone. And I'm like, you lucky you got the phone. And just because everybody else has it, we don't need it. Just call me if you need me. I'm not adding on. This is before it was all these free plans where you can get them so easily. But I didn't just give her stuff. And I always made her contribute a penny here or there towards things to let her know stuff is not free. You not just go spend up my money and not appreciate it and think that it just grows on trees and whenever you want something, I'm just going to buy it for you. And you're never going to want to earn and get out there and get stuff for yourself. That's just, you're in the wrong household for that. And where we live and the school she was going to, there was a lot of that going on. And I'm like, don't bring other people's situations into my house. Because those situations, you keep watching them and monitoring them. They're not going to pan out the way you're going to pan out. Because I'm going to make sure that you get it. You know, you're going to... I used to tell her in high school, you might not like me now, but you're going to thank me later. And I can wait because I know what I'm doing for you is the best thing. And the problem with a lot of your friends is they don't have someone like me in their lives really concerned about their future. They're just concerned with being friends. As a parent, you have to be a parent. You know better. You know how things work. And it's up to you to instill that into your child or to prepare your child 
to deal with things as they come up. So you start them early. You don't just, oh, I had it hard. I wanted to be better for them. That's handicapping them. Just making everything so easy and not having them work and earn something for themselves. Now every distraction that comes out, now you distract it right along with them because they're going to pull you in and you're going to buy it for them. And then they're not going to appreciate it after a while. And you got a kid now that just is going to become lazy and have that feeling of entitlement because you're the parent, you need to buy it for me. Mm -mm. That is never and was never and will never happen <laughs> in this house. And Janae was unhappy a lot when she was growing up. But as she got older and she went away to college and she's lived with all these different roommates, she's seen, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was telling her, even with the friends that she went to school with in high school, you know, a lot of them are already, you know, having kids at an early age and, um, are you eavesdropping? I heard some footsteps in the background. So yeah, she can already see with some of the kids that she went to school with, what's going on with them. You know, as far as going away to school and trying to find their way, a lot of them have wasted two or three years already. A lot of them have had kids, no jobs, not married, still living at home. And at and yet, okay, I'm back. That memory card ran out of memory again. I was trying to finish before I came close, but we're almost done. But I was saying something about she's saying how a lot of her friends have kids still living at home, they're not married, they're not in school, no jobs, and that's hard on parents. You know, parents have already raised you. I know at least this parent, I can't speak for all parents, but I would think you don't raise a child to turn around and raise their kids on top of the one you already raised. <coughs> so, um, oops, forgot to put some water on here first. So anyways, the point is, kind of forgot my point now, but what I think I was leading up to was just saying that she can see <clears throat> all the things that I was trying to teach her and knows it was it was in her best interest because now she can see all of this for herself and focusing on what is important versus what you want all the time is what's going to get you the best result focusing on just doing the right thing and getting yourself in the position to be victorious it's a process it takes time stop wanting things too fast before you're ready to even have them or handle them or deal with them. Just because you want it doesn't mean, just because you want it now doesn't mean you're ready to receive it now. You haven't prepared yourself for what you're asking for. And that's a lot of the times why you don't have it because God knows you're not ready for it. So look at, learn how to look at the signs of things. Know when you're distracted and know how to walk away from distractions. Know how to know know when to run towards something and know when to run away from something. The things that you're running towards, are they really something that's going to benefit you? Do they truly have any value in them? Something that's gonna add to your life instead of add drama to your life, add something good to your life. Learn how to tell the difference and know when it's meant for you, you're going to get it. If you got to fight and go through all kind of changes and figure this out and figure that out, I really believe something, someone, whoever you believe in is trying to tell you something. For me, I think God works very much in our lives through other people and through our experiences. That's how he works in our lives. And you have to be able to decipher when that is happening and when it's not. When to 
just focus, crack down and focus and allow yourself to forget things that aren't good for you. Know how to look at them the right way. If everybody else was jumping off a bridge, you wouldn't jump, would you? So you got to look at it the same way. Just because everybody's getting the latest here and the latest there and you can't get it, that doesn't mean you'll never get it, but it means you can't get it now. Don't make it so permanent in your life. There, and, and a lot of times when that's the case, it's probably because you have something bigger and better that's going to benefit you more anyways that you're trying to get. Don't let it take the focus off of that and prevent you from getting, reaching the goal that definitely is more important than the one you're just wanting. Keep your eye on the prize and know what that prize is. So that's all I have to say about today's topic. I mean, I could just go around and around and just cite more examples or, you know, everybody probably knows someone, again, who can um, relate or, you know, who this topic fits. There's a lot of people out there who are distracted and a lot of you guys watching might recall a time when you were distracted. I can recall a few times where I had to catch myself because I was distracted, but I always had a quality of being able to get myself back on track because my goals, when I want something big, <clears throat> I am realistic about it. I know it's going to take sacrifice, it's going to take hard work, and I ask myself, are you willing to do what it takes? If not, you're not going to get it. So don't start something you're not going to finish. You got to be honest and true to yourself. Honest with yourself and true to yourself. And know who you are. If you're lazy and you always stopping things midstream, then you got to go in. You got to change that. It's not going to come to you. You, gotta, you know what's required. And if everything were easy, a lot of people would have so much more. But you gotta work for these things. So just keep that in mind is all. Don't be distracted. Focus on what God would have you do or whoever it is that you believe in, whoever or whatever that you believe in. You know, start uh, believing in it and living it and taking your mind off of these things. Retailers do not have your best interest in mind. They have theirs in mind and promotions are things how can we've already got them distracted this is how the promotion works we've already got them distracted with the object now how can we reel them in and get them hooked so that we can make money off of them that's how they look at the consumer it's not for your best interest so when it comes time for you to go and and it's not always a material thing i want to say it's people as well but on the material thing, when it's time for you to buy something, make sure you're buying it for the right reason and that you really need it. And it's something that's going to benefit your life and not distract you even further. Because you just do yourself a disservice. These dis distractions are very effective once they get you hooked. So don't let that happen to you. I'm saying be strong, be aware. And you will benefit from it. All right, so that's today's session of energizing and moisturizing our hair. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. I don't want to talk too long today, but hopefully these positive words have energized someone's soul and spirit so that they realize life is always going to be full of situations where you might want to be somewhere else but than where you are or you might want something you can't have or you want to be happier than you are that's life life is full of journeys peaks and values and that's why i like reading these little sayings because it helps us to look at things differently and to see number one that everybody's going through something all the time whether it's happy sad just blah we all go through things throughout our lives that's just life is a journey and I know you hear these cliches all the time or these sayings but the reason you hear them all the time and the reason they're out there is because they're true if you keep hearing something over and over there's some truth to it so I just like to take those cliches 
and, and these sayings and quotes that I'm reading and apply them to our lives so that you can have an understanding of what those words truly mean and how they truly apply to you and to try and give you something to look forward to in the future with some knowledge, wisdom, whatever you want to call it, in your ear so that when you encounter these things, hopefully some of these words will ring true to you to let you know you're just, you're human, just like everybody else. And we're all going through something similar, but different, but we all have challenges that we have to face and none of it's that serious to where we can't get through it and get to the other side of, you know, if we're at, in a dark time where we can't get to the light again we're in the light now we might go through the darkness but that's life and these sayings are there to help guide you through all of that and to let you know that whatever anybody's going through you can come out of it and if you're in it you can I mean if you're coming out of it that it's always something waiting around the corner that could take you back into it but it's nothing to fear it's just learning how to deal with the cards that life deals you all right, I'm going to stop it right there because I'll start going off on another tangent. You guys have a great the rest of your weekend, and I will see you in the next video.